Hello Tech Friends! Today with me is Wolfgang and my name is Spent. We have talked last time about Azure Arc, what it is, and how you can get started with Azure Arc. So what is the topic today, Wolfgang? Today I want to show you how to connect to the Kubernetes cluster through Azure Arc. Last time I showed you how to install Azure Arc, but everything happened directly on the Kubernetes cluster. So the administrator had to connect via SSH to the VM where the Kubernetes cluster was running on and uh, execute the commands directly there. For security reasons, I don't want to give everyone access to my Kubernetes cluster, to my infrastructure on-premise and so on. And so I'm going to show you how to create a user in Kubernetes and how to use this user to connect via Azure Arc security to the Kubernetes cluster. All right. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. And here we have a quick overview of the uh, project I was working on from the last video. On the left side, here we can see that we have a bunch of Ubuntu VMs. They are running a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, to be more specific, a K3S cluster, and we have installed Azure Arc there. And right now, it's only possible to go from the Kubernetes cluster through the firewall outside to the internet. For example, here to the Azure Container Registry. And right now, there's no way to get into the cluster from outside. So, for example, the Azure Monitor service wouldn't be able to connect inside the cluster. And what we're going to do now is create a user on this Kubernetes cluster and then enable the user to connect via Azure Arc from outside through the firewall to the Kubernetes cluster. Mm -hmm. So to get started, you have to connect uh, once more to the VM where the Kubernetes cluster is running. So I'm again connected to the um, master node. And if I check the um, kubectl and check all namespaces, we can see that Azure Arc is installed here. Mm -hmm. And you are still now connected directly, right? Exactly. Right now, I'm connected directly. And I have some code on my left side, so don't mind me looking there. So the first step is we create a new service account. We name it admin user. So that's uh, Kubernetes functionality. And then we add a cluster role binding to this admin user. And we give this user the cluster role of the cluster admin, which we can see here. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I'm creating a user for myself uh, with administrative rights. But for the developer, I would create different users. For example, maybe for an architect or a lead developer with more permissions and for an intern with less permissions. Mm -hmm. So you are basically creating for each team member, you would create an, a different user with different user role or cluster role. Exactly. The reason is I want to lock who is doing what. Uh, for security reasons, and also creating a user also creates a token. So every user has his or her own token. So I don't want to share this between uh, different team members. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And that's already the next step. So now that you have created this user and this role binding, this also creates a secret, and we can read the secret. Mm -hmm. And with the secret, we can select the token of the secret. Um, I know it's a lot of code right now, and um, it might be too fast to type, but we will have some more information in the description, and there you can also find all the talk, uh, all the code I present today, so you can copy and paste it there. So now we've gotten the token, and now we can print this token to the console. So that's a JWT token, and I can use this and copy it 
and go to the Azure portal. And there I have my Azure Arc instance. And if you click on namespace, for example, I'm asked to log in. And I can paste my token there and sign in. Now that we are logged in, we can see all the namespaces. And we can also select, for example, workloads and see all the pods that are running. And you can see that there are um, two pods not running, but everything else is working greatly. So here, my Windows machine, I have a PowerShell window, and I can use the Azure CLI to connect through Azure Arc to the Kubernetes cluster. So I can paste the command. And here you can see it's uh, a proxy. Then I provide the name of the Azure Arc instance. That's the K3S Arc. Then the resource group, where it's located. And then the token from the previous demo. So in this case, your token will look different. But uh, paste it in there, press Enter, and the Azure CLI will create a proxy connection through Azure Arc, then to the Kubernetes cluster, and download the cube config from there, um, set the Kubernetes context here to, to use the downloaded config. And now I'm connected to the Kubernetes cluster. So if I open a new window here, I can use the kubectl and get, for example, the namespaces. And it takes one or two seconds because right now it's going from Switzerland to the Azure data center and then back to Switzerland. And as you can see here, the Azure Arc namespace is also here installed as 30 minutes ago. OK. And now connected through Azure Arc. So I don't have to connect via SSH or remote desktop connection to the Kubernetes cluster or the infrastructure on premise. And I still can use all the tools I'm used to. So for example, I can also use a dashboard. So um, I like to use Octant. It's a dashboard from VMware, but you can use any dashboards. So I'm going to open this. It's going to load all the data that's inside the Kubernetes cluster and should display it within a couple of seconds. So here I can see everything that's running inside my Kubernetes cluster. And on the top right, I can also see the same namespaces as I've seen in the um, PowerShell window. So I, as a developer, can use all the tools I'm used to. And I can work the same way as I would, would work with a Kubernetes cluster that's running on my machine or on Azure. It's amazing. So with one comment, I'm able to create a proxy, which will as well save me a file, so in, in kind of a config file for my kubectl which allows me to connect then through this proxy to my on-prem Kubernetes cluster on a secure way. And I can use as well different kind of tools which rely on this kind of uh, um, cube config file and um, allows me to use this tool to see the resources, the services of this Kubernetes cluster. Exactly. I, as a developer, I'm completely free to use the tool I want. If I want to use a Mac, I can use a Mac, Visual Studio Code. It doesn't matter. As long as it can connect to a Kubernetes cluster, it can connect through Azure Arc to the on-premise Kubernetes cluster. Mm, nice. All right. So this means that you have now set up this for your user, but um, how does this look like for another team member? Would you do the same for him with a different role? What would you do there? Exactly. I can use a group, for example, if I want to use a developer group and just create this group, or I can use uh, create different users and just give the users the token. So they can use this token and connect to the Kubernetes cluster. Mm -hmm. All right. So we, we saw that for a user, an additional user for each team member, you would have to do the same. 
Um, is there a way how you can use the benefit of um, Azure Airbac um, so you can manage this with the available tools from Azure to, to manage the access rights and um, yeah, the users which have um, the which should allow to uh, be allowed to use it or to access this Kubernetes cluster on-prem? Yes, that's possible. And that's also one of the nice features of Azure, I think, because nowadays you can use so many applications or services with Azure Active Directory. So what you can do is you register your Azure Arc instance with Azure Active Directory. And then later on, you can configure it to use Azure RBAC roles. So this would mean that you don't have to connect to a cluster, create a user, create a token. Um, you only have to give the user the Azure permission and then the user can log in. Um, this is a bit out of scope for today, but we will provide a link to more information in the description. Hmm, great, but well, that's, that's amazing that it's possible because I could imagine this could be a little bit uh, overhead to do this kind of management for each user. Nice. Um, all right, so thank you very much for today's um, video about how you can connect securely to your on-prem Kubernetes cluster. And next video, what are you going to show you show there? The next time I'm going to show you how to use Azure Arc and Azure Monitor. So as you've seen before, the firewall is blocking Azure Monitor, but we are going to install an extension in the uh, Kubernetes cluster using Azure Arc. And this extension will send information to Azure Monitor. So we can use Azure Monitor the same way as we use it with Azure uh, resources. And so we can um, monitor uh, our cluster and also can create alerts if something is going wrong. Amazing. I'm really excited to see how this is going to work. So stay tuned and see you next time.